I might open with a um, with a little uh, a little rant on Thanksgiving because I've seen a lot of people. So like, um, I remember I did a thing last year on a SE Cup show with Andy Levy about um and, and and we were you know being tongue in cheek but I, I really did kind of mean what I was saying where Andy Levy was basically you know saying like don't be one of these horrible people who like talks politics at Thanksgiving and this is like the kind of age old thing like religion and politics are the two subjects you're not supposed to talk about and um I hate that because everything else is boring. Yeah, it's like, what, why am I going to we... talk about fucking with my grandma? Yeah, really. Those are the only three topics I got. Or drugs. <laughs> so... I'm going to talk about drug usage with uh, my Aunt Kathy. Believe me, religion and politics <laughs> are the most appropriate things I'm going to talk about yeah, exactly. with my family. Um, but I always, I don't know, there was always something about it that just kind of bugged me to be like, hey, you know, when you're with the people who are closest to you in your life who you care about the most, try to avoid the most important things you could be talking about. Like, why? Yeah, don't Why should opinions. we do that? And Bill Maher did this whole thing um, on his show because he did his final episode of the year. Um, I guess he takes like a couple months off during the Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's break. And he was like, yeah, everyone should just not talk about politics so you can just get along. You know what I mean? And I, I give you permission, like, don't talk about it. Don't get into this whole thing. And I just, I don't know. It, I, it was always strange to me, particularly. Now, I get. If somebody's not interested in politics at all, if this just isn't your thing, not wanting to talk about it, I, I can kind of understand that. And as I've said many times before on the show, I have absolutely nothing against anybody who goes, I just don't care about politics. I don't I don't judge that at all. Like I don't I think uh, specialization and the division of labor and all that stuff, like people need, to to think about different things and and truthfully i think that a lot of times people who are interested in politics make the mistake of feeling like i'm you know i'm dealing with these really important issues while you're just dealing with your you know lower tasks where the if somebody's like you know whatever they're in food production they're they're you know they're probably doing a lot more you know the line i've said a lot of times is if everybody was a, as obsessed with politics as i am we'd all starve to death because no one would be producing food and we'd all be, you know, getting eaten by animals because we wouldn't have electricity and we'd be living in teepees in the woods talking about fractional reserve banking or something like that. So it's probably, it's good. And I get that, but what, what always was like, uh, what I could never wrap my head around was someone like Bill Maher or Andy Levy or these guys who's, who's this is your world, this is what you care about, being like, yeah, just shut up about it. That's just so strange to me. Why would you ever want to shut up about this? I remember this is why I one of the reasons why, but why I love Scott Horton so much and hanging out with him. When we were last year, when we were on the Contra Cruise, me and Scott Horton, I think, stayed up till four in the morning every night, just talking. I mean, like just kids talking. at a sleepover party. Oh, literally, like like the the weirdest kids at a sleepover <laughs> party ever. But it would be people like you know who were like listeners of the Tom Woods show and our show and stuff like that, and Contra Krug Krugman, obviously. Um, and they'd all be there, and they'd all like kind of gather around in these circles and just talk all different libertarian history of politics and wars and the fucking you know the, the wars in eighteen forty and you know like all this like crazy maybe the eighteen sixties wherever whenever that war was. Uh, but so it, it was, and it was just so much fun. I mean, I literally I would wake up every morning and my voice would be hoarse like just because we've been talking for hours the night before, and it was so goddamn much fun. And I just never. Like, to me, I never don't want to talk about this shit. I just find it so interesting. That's why I do this. It's because I find it to be so interesting. So I just don't, I so don't you know. You heard it here first. Ruin other people's Thanksgiving. Yes. They want to go home. They just want to talk about, you know, the nice turkey and the weather. And you let them know why the Fed's ruining their lives and we yes. got to end the war, the foreign wars. Well, I do think that there's a, there's better ways to do it. You know, I mean, like, I, I think you can try to do uh, do it in a way where you're not going to, like, I don't know, um, cause rifts within your family. I get it. Family is very important and you don't want to, like, be on bad terms with everybody. And for whatever reason, um, politics, it can be a very divisive issue. And especially, I guess, today, in today's culture, like, it's really, like, you know, there's there's never been a time, and there's actually some, like, uh, um, some polls that 
will bear this out, but there's never been a time, uh, at least in my lifetime, where people were as quick to call the other side evil. Not just that I disagree with you. There was something where, um, I forget the exact numbers, but there was this one poll that I thought was really interesting that I saw maybe about uh, like four months ago, five months ago, something like that. And it basically said that a record high amount of uh, registered Republicans say that the Democrats' view are out of the mainstream, that mainstream Democrats' politics are outside the mainstream. And a record high number of Democrats said that Republicans' views were outside the mainstream, which is just in itself a very interesting little piece of information. You're like, so really there isn't a mainstream anymore. There's these two kind of poles. And what does that mean? You know, like how can we all think everybody's out of the mainstream other than we're just kind of being, you know, like separated or balkanized or whatever. Um, but I think that, you know, there's a weird, there's a weird position that libertarians who are uh, obsessed with politics, such as myself, where there's a weird position that we're in where our our basic belief is that none of this stuff should exist so we shouldn't have it to talk about like ideally there would be no fed and then there's no fed to complain about but while it does exist you kind of got to talk about it it's you know and I, I it's it's the comparison that i probably lean on way too much but i do feel is very accurate is that uh we're we're abolitionists essentially talking about slavery. So in an ideal world, the abolitionist is out of a job because slavery gets abolished and then you got nothing to be an abolitionist against. But while slavery is still an institution, it seems like a pretty important thing to talk about. And if you can't talk to the people who you love, who are your family about it, I mean, why, why would you ever be able to talk to others? Now, I will admit that I, and I've heard a lot of people say this before, I have had more success in converting non-family members than family members. You've talked about this before, too, where you'll kind of, like, lay out, like, a very detailed, like, you know, argument to your sister, and it's just kind of like, nah, <laughs> nah, I don't think so. Um, and I don't know. Maybe there's there's a lot of different reasons for that. But I, I think what I would say, here's, here's my uh, advice or strategies for talking about any any of those issues that you really care about with uh with your your family. And this is true. The first piece is just true for anyone in general, right? And this is the the way Scott Horton puts it is perfect, but he he says uh you always have to attack the left from the left and the right from the right. So, you never want to try to rob anyone of their identity or tell basically tell them that they're the evil side and everything they have, you know, it should be blamed on them. So, you know, the examples of that are always like, you know, if you attack, attacking the right from the right is, um, I don't know, like the lot, you know, you could say that the wars are unconstitutional or that the, the, you know, the constitution doesn't grant any of these powers. You could also talk about how like, you know, George, George W. Bush wasn't a real conservative, any of these ways. And then the left is more like something like, well, you'd be like, um, I don't know. Well, I always say, like, you know, if you're against the income tax, you'd be like, oh, I'm just against, you know, incarcerating nonviolent criminals, something like that, right? Like, that, that's, you, you yeah. can kind of speak in their language and not require that they give up their identity for you. The other thing that I, I think is, is just a good way to approach it is to kind of, like, you want to try to win some credibility, so find areas that you agree on and that you, there's almost always going to be at least something that you agree on. Find that and let that be the lead in, you know, like, like that's you can start with. So you think that turkey is delicious, right? OK, yes. so here's where you we need to abolish your, yes, the you're fed. on the yes train. Yeah, <laughs> no, but there's something where, you know, if um, uh, it, it's easy, if I'm like talking to a conservative uh, right wing person and I'm talking about something like. I don't know, let's say, talking about how the American military basically picked the fight with the Muslims, not the other way around. This is why we're dealing with the terrorism problem we have. Is because the, now, just to say that is, you know, that's not going to sit so well with your average right-wing conservative. But if you start with what Bill Clinton did to fuck it up, if you're like, here's what happened, Bill Clinton 
put these sanctions in against Iraq and hundreds of thousands of kids died and this started a whole thing. It's just, it's a little bit easier to swallow if Bill Clinton's the bad guy. You know what I mean? And you yeah. kind of like win over, like you got to find ways that you can, you know, and this is your, these are your family members or, or close friends. So you know them better than the average person and use that to your advantage. Like use that to your fucking advantage that you, you know what will appeal to them and start with that. If people, if, if you're just an enemy to somebody, then people just dig in and they get set in what they already believed. But if you come over like, hey man, I'm your ally here. It's just, it's a lot easier to open people up. 